hosts of Flashback today. Thanks for being part of Flashback's 20th anniversary weekend. Can we get a round of applause for Flashback? Coming to the stage now, please welcome Melinda Clark. It's you, it's you! Yeah, you guys, if you, are, if you want to move to the, the closer seats, you can move forward. We just ask that uh, after the panel, you might have to scoot back and make room for the uh, gold members. How's it going? Are you having a good convention so far? Well, I am. I, I just love hearing all the stories. It, so the question I ask every single one of you who've come to visit me at my table was, how old were you when you watched The Living Dead, or Return of the Living Dead 3? 99% of the time, it's 11. <laughs> or you somewhere between that. I get 8, 7, mm, once in a while, but usually it's that preteen kind of uh, thing that I guess those images are burned into the memories of <laughs> young boys and girls everywhere. <laughs> I, I'm still shocked that it's 30, it's 30 years since we made that film yeah. this year. So, um, thank you. I'm so surprised and so grateful that it still somehow resonates with audiences. This why why do you think that is? I mean, a lot of horror movies kind of fall by the wayside. Yes, do they? Some, okay. Yeah. So I'm not an expert in horror films at all. I didn't even watch them. Because, <laughs> well, I got scared actually filming the film because those, those creepy, pup, they call them puppets, I guess, but the actual zombies that were going all over me. I mean, I, that was an acting, I was actually scared. Um, I think when you think about the zombies, zombies are always these dead creatures that were, you know, I guess um, decomposing in the soil, where she's a healthy teenage girl who becomes, who dies and becomes a zombie within like 15 minutes. So she's intact. So it's this, it was a brand new spin on an old genre, I guess, and I don't think they've done that. So sexy zombie isn't, zo those aren't two words that usually go together, right? <laughs> and uh, I think the Romeo and Juliet story, I think it kind of surprised, I mean, you guys could tell me yourselves, like why that film kind of, we're still talking about it or still love it or just had, I think it was original. And the more I, just today I had this thought and I was like, not only was it kind of an original take, but even that costume and working with Steve Johnson and Bill Corso, who's now like a huge special effects artist, that was such a singular moment in time that was unique to itself and really just a cool, cool gift that I can remember those times. And it's not, it's not being, it, nobody's trying to repeat it, nobody's trying to mimic it, it just is what it is. Well, it was so kind of ahead of its time in terms of talking about. I just rewatched it last night. And I'm like, oh, did you see that? This movie's dealing with like body modification and cutting and right. piercing and you know all the stuff she's doing to her body to try to hold off the hunger and all that. And 30 years later, I mean, that stuff has become more and more commonplace. Maybe is the word. Well, maybe or it's. I think we've obviously those are afflictions that. To, that would probably require some mental uh, therapy, I guess, in, in, a, in a real world. But isn't that what horror kind of explores? It explores right. all of our deepest, darkest thoughts and afflictions and, uh, I mean, and psychology and all of that. So it was an interesting thing. So she's supposed to be, you, she's introduced as this rebellious teenager and by... You, you see the little, you know, she's playing with this. But one of the things that I really wanted, and it's interesting that they turned this down, I thought she should at least have, when you first meet her, she should have at least a nose ring or a lip ring or an eyebrow ring. And even for this horror genre, or sorry, for these producers, they said that was too much <laughs> to start. And I was like, but wouldn't that kind of tell you who she is? And then when she does, because, you know, if, if this had happened to another, um, you know, a different teenager, maybe she would have just 
she wouldn't necessarily have been cutting. Maybe she would have danced like the red shoes until, you know what I mean? So she ended up being, this is like the deepest part of her came out. And um, I, I tried to fight for it, but they, they cut it out. They didn't want me to wear the, the ring, so that's fine. But uh, yeah, I think it's, I think we, we talk a lot more about mental health nowadays. Yeah. So it's definitely more prevalent, yes. I mean, she didn't even have a tattoo or anything. But I'm still waiting, almost every convention I've ever been to, somebody attempts the costume. Am I talking too close? Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, somebody attempts the costume and they come up to my table and I'm like, oh honey, what time did you wake up this morning? <laughs> I've been up since 3 a.m. and I'm still not done. I was like, so I don't recommend trying to do the costume because it took professionals eight hours to do it the first time and we got it down to four hours, no, five. But imagine eight hours of makeup, a hundred different applications, and then you have at least 12 to 15 hours of shooting on top of that, and then two hours to remove it. So. For the first time in my life, I did a couple 24-hour days, and the producers let me drive home, which was not safe. But um, I was nodding off the wheel. That's when you have to kind of stand up for yourself and say, no, 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 I can't do that, so. Did you, as somebody who hadn't done much horror, I mean, did you kind of know, did you have any idea what you were in the store for no. with all that? <laughs> <laughs> no. So it was only like the third or fourth thing I'd ever done, and to be on, I remember the audition. I don't know which came first. It was either an audition that I was, I said, I don't know if I want to do this. Oh, no. Also, let me preface it with, it was the early 90s and it was post Friday, Friday the 13th and Nightmare and pre-Scream. It was this time when all horror films were low budge, straight to video. We were lucky that it even went to a couple theaters, I guess. And it, for, for myself, I wasn't necessarily a fan of horror, and it wasn't necessarily something that was going, you know, the, it wasn't a scream at the time. It wasn't something that was going to instantly make you a star. Because a few people have asked me if my career took off from it, and it didn't really. I did People weren't picking up the phone necessarily because of that. Um, I think it gained, because it gained so much popularity at home in the video market, that it's only was like maybe, I got a call from Robert England, it was like 15 years after we'd done a film together, but he called me, he's like, Melinda, I'm in Argentina, and I'm staring at your face, it's 20 feet high, that living dead thing is a cold hit here in Argentina. I was like, it is? I have no idea. So he was like the first person that told me that was um, kind of a popular thing. Yeah. yeah. I sometimes wonder if it wasn't a part three of an, of an established franchise, but it was just called Living Dead Girl or something like that. Uh, yeah. If it would have caught on more at the time. I know it's found its life, but at the time I feel like it would have been a bigger, but horror was in kind of a weird place. It was, wasn't it? Screen. Yeah, it was definitely, the studios were not making horror. But then somebody else pointed out to me, you can raise your hand if you're there, that, that the, or that's why he, he loved the, the films from the early 90s, because they were the low budge. Right. And it had that gritty feeling. I mean, I think the budget was $2 million. Wow. And I think we did it in under a month. So I was a little tired. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> And how was working with Brian Usena? Was he, how was he with actors versus kind of, because his movies are so effects driven. Yeah. Is his attention kind of more there? Does he have time for you as an actor? Um, see, it's such a, it's, you know, what we do is such a collaborative art. There's so much, you know, I show up with my dialogue learned and, you know, and unlike theater, say, where you rehearse for weeks on end before you put something up, we rehearse on the day and shoot. So it's, uh, it, there, there are things that you just have to go with and you're, and you're doing a dance with the camera department and everything. And we, we didn't do a lot of rehearsal. Um, 
when you're doing a budget, when you're under a quick schedule and a budget such as it was, it was really just shoot and go. And from time to time, you know, a lot of it is just about getting that special effects done. Right. So I had just finished doing a play called Vicious, which was the original material written about Sid and Nancy um, before, the, before the movie came out. And actually the original was in 1984. George Clooney was in it in LA, it was this play, and then we did it in 91. So I just come off of playing a heroin addict, and I just equated this character, because how do you play a zombie who wants brains? Just the same way a, a junkie would want their drugs and heroin, I guess. So that was, that's kind of the shortcut. You have to use what you know, and, and that's how I approached the character. So it wasn't, and I'd been playing, and I did that for 12 weeks that play, so she, it was just a kind of like jumped right into it and doing that. So Brian Hughes is a gentleman, a sweet man, and very kind and patient, and, uh, but once we got going, it was just about getting the shot. I mean, there were certain things that were not planned and just happened, like when I come out of that door in that, I don't know, I just did it on the day, like how she's, she's this full reveal of this monster, this completely transformed creature who is, you know, how does she come out? And to me it was like, I don't know, it was like she was a snake or like coming out and like, bah! Just like Wolverine, before Wolverine, right? <laughs> with, her, with her hands and stuff. But those are things that just happened on the day. You know, they weren't planned. Okay. Um, we have time for